So how do we reconcile this problem of evil and a good, powerful God? Hi, and welcome to Faith in Front. Today we want to look at this issue of evil and trying to reconcile it with a good, loving, all-powerful God. Sometimes it's just hard to reconcile the two, and evil has been a stumbling block for many outside uh, the Christian faith, just many outside the belief in God, uh, period. And just let me say that I definitely can understand why this would be a stumbling block, because uh, truth be told, uh, Christians, we, we have to grapple with this reality of evil, uh, evil that we may have experienced in our own lives, evil that has been experienced in the lives of people that we know and love when we see the horrible pictures of history, whether it's, you know, slavery, ho Holocaust, uh, just all these evils uh, that has taken place over the years and a lot of evils that are currently taking place. I mean, there's still sex trafficking, there's still child abuse, there's still all of these things that just, that disturb us in our emotions so much to where we're like, man, what is going on with that? So I can definitely understand why this would be a stumbling block, that this would be a tough issue uh, to push through, trying to reconcile it with a good, loving, uh, all-powerful God. So we're going to divide this topic into two points because it, it, it's just kind of that deep. Um, but today we just we just want to look at evil and how we how we process it, how we address it. And then in part two, we'll look at we'll go into detail most about why God allows evil. But we just want to deal with this whole issue of God and evil trying to work through them. So the first point is, is or the question that could be raised is. Does evil disprove God because I'm not saying all who have a disbelief in God that all atheists. I'm not I'm not trying to generalize, but when you talk to someone who doesn't believe in God, you can best believe that evil and the horrible things that happen is going to be it's going to come up in that conversation somewhere It's going to it's going to come up to the point to where that person believes that it can't be a good God, a good, all powerful God if we have all of this evil. So some actually believe that it disproves God. Now, that's kind of an interesting one to, to, to kind of work through because sometimes it sounds like the person is blaming God for the evil, but you really can't blame God for the evil because your starting point is that God is not there. So you really can't blame God uh, for evil because your worldview says that there is no God. So you really can't blame him or you can't really be mad at him either because according to if you if you're an atheist, he he doesn't exist for you to be mad at about it. I believe that evil more so proves God than disproves God. When you think about it like this, C.S. Lewis is noted for stating we know what a crooked line is because we know the standard of a straight line. If you've never seen a straight line, you would never know what a crooked line was. If there is no objective standard of good outside of us, what we call God, then how do we know what evil and bad is? I think God actually proves that I should say I believe that evil actually proves the existence of God. You know what cheating is or, or, or dishonesty is because you know the standard of honesty and fairness. You know what lying is because you know the standard of truth. Now, that one's up in big conversation today. I mean, tr we should know what a lie is. <laughs> but today, that's kind of hard to call because... Truth keeps changing, right? But we know a lie because we know that there is a truth, 
uh, that's that's the opposite of it. So I believe that evil actually proves the existence of God more so than disprove the existence of God. And then we want to look at the next point is that is evil something in and of itself that God made? Because someone will say, well, why would he make evil? When he really didn't make evil, he made the possibility uh, for evil because of free will choice, which we'll get into in part two. But evil is not something in and of itself. Just like if you saw uh, some rust on the ground as you were walking or you saw some rust in the street, you wouldn't think that that rust was just something in and of itself, you would know that that rust indicates that there was something that rusted that was there that left the rust on the ground. We see rusted cars and things like that, but but we know that the rust is just an indication that there was that it wasn't always rusted. It was good, but it was something that went bad and evil in a lot of cases is just good gone bad. Just like we don't go around and say, oh, look at that rot. Well, Something has to be rotten. Okay, you can have an apple that 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 winds up being rotten or a rotten egg, as we might as we might say. But we we never see rot in and of itself. We we see things that that can rot over over time. And even when you look at darkness, well, darkness is just the absence of light. If darkness was something in and of itself, then when you turn on lights, there you, you would probably think that there should be darkness and light happening at the same time. But we know that even if you're in a cave and you just turn and you just flip up a, a lighter or a match, it's like darkness goes away. And, and as you walk through, you are with the light, wherever the light shines, the darkness goes away. Just like when you're walking down the street and you see your shadow, well, the shadow is really just the absence of light hitting that surface because your body's in between the sun and that surface. And so evil is more like that. Evil is not something in and of itself. It's really good gone bad. And then the third point. If you want to remove God from the equation because of evil. The point is, is you haven't gotten rid of evil. And evil is the issue, right? Evil is evil is what we don't like. So when you get rid of God, you can get rid of God. You can say, no, there's no God. But you haven't really gotten rid of evil. All you've really done, according to John Lennox, uh, another uh, great apologist out there, mathematician, you've just gotten rid of a way of processing it, of processing that reality. But you haven't gotten rid of evil. You haven't gotten rid of it. Why not keep God in the equation and try to work with it that way instead of pushing him out of it? Because you're not fixing anything. What's left? What's the fix? Okay, you say, okay, well, God's not there. You're going to look to mankind to fix it? Uh, I think mankind has been trying to fix evil and we failed. I believe God is the only one who can fix it. And one day he is going to fix it. He's going to fix it all. I mean, I believe the song We Are the World came out, what, almost 40 years ago? Yeah. There's still people hungry. I'm just saying. You know, we, we'll come together and we'll do all the, And I'm not trying to minimize that. That was a good thing to do. But it didn't fix anything. It, it kind of kind of helped the problem at that moment. But we still have the problem of hunger. We still have poverty. We still have all these things because I believe that ultimately God is the one who's, who can fix it. And he's the one that is going to fix evil and, and deal with it. But if you push him out of the equation, well, then you just you're just somewhat left to yourselves. So I hope this has been somewhat encouraging and and somewhat helpful and and brought some clarity uh, to this issue. Uh, next week, we're going to get more into why does God allow it. But we just wanted to just kind of look at evil and existence of God and just how to uh, work with those two uh, realities. So uh, until next week, keep your faith in front. Mm -hmm.